Yan. Hello. Hello sa inyo. At ako pa rin si Sir Mau. At pag-aaralan natin, ang, ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon is our lesson 4, Layers of the Earth. So, bago tayo magsimula, magkakahoot muna tayo. Kahoot. Okay. So, ready na ba kayo sa kahoot? Ah, sige. Simulan na natin. Okay. Okay, question number one. Which layer of earth is the thickest? Mantle, crust, or outer core? Thickest, makapal. Huh? Base sa picture, mukhang mantle. No? Correct. Okay, next. Question number two. Which layer of the, of the earth is the thinnest? Pinakamanipis. Is it crust, mantle, or outer core? Ah, oh, crust. Sagutin natin yung crust. Okay, next Question number 3 Which layer is the hottest? Pinakamainit Which layer is the hottest? Base sa picture Ano sa palagay nyo? Yung red uh, Dahil yun ang pinakamainit ano? So that's inner core so Let's see If our answer is correct Okay, next, next. It's mostly made of liquid or melted iron and nickel. Is it mantle, crust, or inner core? Okay, basa sa picture ano kaya? Hmm. Melted iron and nickel core. Yata na natin outer core. Very good. Question 5 out of 10, the core of the, of the earth, it's a, hmm, basa sa picture. Is it earthquake, magnet, magnetic field, or volcanoes? Volcanoes, o oh, sige. Bo volcanoes ba? Magnetic field, kasi yun yung basa. out of 10. The inner core is made, made of iron and nickel, platinum and gold, or copper and silver. Hmm. Iron and nickel. Hmm. Sige, sagutin natin ito. Correct. Very good. 7 out of 10, true or false, the, the earth moves. Hmm. Is it true or false? Kumagalaw ba ang cross? Kumagalaw nga ba? Base sa mga lesson natin, lesson 1, 2, and 3, gumagalaw ba? That's true. Yeah, correct. 8. Oh, uh, 8 out of 10 The crust is broken up into Plates, countries, or borders hmm, Nahati ba ang crust into Countries, mga bansa Borders pa Or plates O ang plates, no? Okay 9 out of 10 the Earth is about blank. Is it 4.5 billion years old, 4 million years old, or 4,000 years old? Hindi naman pwede 4,000 years old kasi yung masyadong bata yan. 4 million years old? Medyo maaga pa. Pero paano kaya kung 4.5 billion years old? 
Sige, try natin. Okay. Eh, so, what was the old na ang Last question. The Earth's inner core is split because of intensity, high pressure, or magnetic force. It makes the inner core solid. The high pressure, intensity, or magnetic force. High pressure. Okay, so salamat sa inyong participation sa ating kahoot. Now, we will proceed now sa ating lesson. Ayan, hello sa inyo. At, ayan. At pagpapatuloy na natin yung discussion. So, sa lesson number one natin, we discuss about earthquake. So, I forgot to include this experience doon sa, ano, sa ating lesson. So, before I begin with the layers of the earth, um, itake lang muna natin itong experience namin sa Valer, ar- ang Ermita Hill. Yan. Yan. So, alam nyo ba, ng 1735, yan, on, on 27 December 1735, a, a big tidal wave pinatawag nila ay Tromba Marina, almost wiped out the town, especially the barrio named Sabang. So, kilalang kilala ang Baler sa Sabang Beach. No? Doon nagkaroon ng malaking tsunami. So, undetermined number of its inhabitants were drowned while the others went up to Ermita Hill, okay, the nearest uh, and the highest point in Valer to survive. So, among the survivors were the families Angara, Bihasa, Bitong, Lumasa, Carrasco, and Poblete. Okay, so that is the, ano, the history from National Historical Commission of the Philippines in 1735. Okay. So, ayan yung, ano, ayan yung isa sa mga nakikita nating uh, sc- uh, sculpture malapit sa or mismo sa malapit sa baba ng Ermita Hill yung family na umaakyat papunta sa Ermita Hill okay so these are some of the pictures namin sa Ermita Hill so ito na ang itsura niya so kung kayo ay pupunta sa Baler okay dapat ano um bumisita kayo sa Okay, so this is my co-teachers na nagpunta kami sa Ernita Hill. Um, diba? Ang saya-saya namin siya. Okay, so this is one of the ano, uh, views or yung or nila, yung parang picturesque Ernita Hill. Ayan. So, nakikita niyo yung Sabang Beach sa ilalim. So, ganyang kataas ang Ermita Hill. Ayan. So, nakikita natin yung dagat. So, imagine, no? Ano kaya itsura ng tsunami dyan? So, this is the yung kuha ko to. Yeah. That's the Sabang Beach from Ermita Hill. Yan, yeah, yeah, Ermita Hill. Actually, dalawang beses kami nakapunta dito. First, kasama ko yung mga ko-teacher. Kaya, siyempre, kasama ko yung mga special loved ones ko. Yeah, especially this person. <laughs> so, 
mataas pa yung ermita hindi nakit namin itong ano itong hagdan patungo sa taas sobrang taas niya di ko na mabilang kung anong kung ilang hakbang ang ginawa namin hanggat mapunta kami dito sa cross itin tuktok ng ermita hill niya yeah, tapos mula sa cross nakita mo pa rin yung dagat okay so ito yung isa sa mga view papunta sa cross ng ermita hill Okay, sa so tignan na natin itong picture na kung sa walang talang bahay kanlungan na, na naligtas sa tsunami. So, ayan ang Armita Hill. Yan. Okay, ngayon, uh, we will go now to our lesson number four, which is the layers of the earth. So, lesson na ito mula nung elementary papunta ngayon, hanggang ngayon sa grade 10. So, atin lang babalikan kung ano mga parts or major parts ng earth interiorly, uh, in its interior o sa pinakaloob. Okay? So, earth is composed of four different layers. So, many geologists believe that the earth cooled the heavier, denser materials sank to the center, and the lighter materials rose to the top. So, because of this, the crust is made up of lightest materials such as rock, basalt, uh, and granite, and the core consists of heavy metals, nickel, and iron. So, let's watch this video muna. Today, we're going to learn about the geosphere. The geosphere is an inner layer of the Earth, extending from its surface to the inner core of the planet. This layer is made up of solid rock and habitable ground. The thickness of the geosphere is approximately 6,730 kilometers. The geosphere is made up of rocks, minerals, magma, and sand. The closer we get to the inner core, temperature, density, and pressure progressively increase. The geosphere is made up of three concentric layers the crust, the mantle, and the core. The crust is the thinnest, outermost layer of the geosphere. The thickness of the crust varies from 5 to 30 kilometers, depending on where you are on the Earth. The crust is made up of continents and the bottoms of the oceans. The geosphere is broken up into several tectonic plates. These make up the crust and also the mantle, and they are found in a layer called the lithosphere. Tectonic plates are constantly moving, molding the crust. Their movements causes earthquakes. The second layer of the geosphere is called the mantle. It is 82% of the Earth's volume, being 2,900 kilometers thick. The temperature of the mantle is really high, ranging from 700 to 1,300 degrees Celsius. That's why it's made up of molten rock called magma. Sometimes magma finds its way up to the surface and flows up through the void between the tectonic plates. This is when volcanoes erupt. The core is the innermost layer of the earth and it is 3,500 kilometers thick. The inner part of the core is made up of solid iron where the outer part is made up of liquid iron and nickel. The temperature in the core is ultra high, ranging from 4,400 to 6,000 degrees Celsius. The wide ranges of temperature and pressure conditions in the outer core cause the molten metal to move. This results in the formation of electric currents that produce magnetic fields. Did you know that thanks to these magnetic fields, we are able to use instruments like the compass? These are the layers of the geosphere. Did you like learning about them? Yan. Okay, so we will continue. So the crust, okay, is the layer that we live on. 
and it is the most widely studied and understood. After the crust is the mantle. So mantle is much hotter and has the ability to flow. Okay, so the outer and inner cores are hotter still with pressure so great that you would be squeezed into a ball smaller than marble if you were able to go to the center of the earth. So ganun katindi, ganun katremendous yung pressure papunta sa center of the earth. Okay, so look at the picture ito. So, yan, the crust is made out of oceanic plate and continental plate so continental plate has the depth range of 5 5 to 25 miles thick and oceanic plate with 3 to 5 miles thick then after crust we have mantle and that flows with the consistency because uh, consistency of asphalt okay the outer core made out of e iron and nickel in the liquid state and the inner core uh, iron and nickel in a solid state okay so now let's discuss crust so the first layer of the earth is crust so the earth's crust is like the skin of an apple it is very thin in comparison to other three layers so the crust is only about three to five miles or eight kilometers thick under the oceans or oceanic crust and about 25 miles or 32 kilometers thick under the con continents or continental crust so the temperatures of crust vary from air temperature on top to about 1600 degrees fahrenheit or 870 degrees celsius in the deepest part of the crust so you can bake a loaf of bread in in your oven at 350 degrees at 1600 degrees fahrenheit rocks begin to melt so remember those figures in 1600 degrees can melt a rock okay so the crust of the earth is broken into many pieces called plates so the plates float on the soft plastic mantle which is located below the surface so these plates usually move along smoothly but sometimes they stick and build up pressure so the pressure builds and and the rock bends until it snaps so when this occurs an earthquake is the result okay so notice how thin the crust of the earth is in comparison to other layers so that's the seven continents and ocean plates basically float across the mantle which is composed of much hotter and denser materials so look at this picture so this is the earth okay so crust is made out of solid silicate materials so tignan nyo how thin the crust is sobrang nipis okay so sobrang nipis after ng crust we have the upper mantle okay after uh, upper mantle which has the depth of 670 kilometers and lower mantle with 200 uh, 2900 kilometers so now tignan natin ito so kumuha tayo ng konting part sa illustration dito ito ayan para makita ito ayan okay so the continental crust has lower density felsic and then ocean crust has higher density or mafic okay so the lithosphere is the uh, made out of crust and uppermost mantle which the tectonic plates is is okay so a stenosphere is the combination and of upper mantle and crust it, uh, a stenosphere is weak and allows plate to move okay Yeah, so down to outer core and inner core, which is composed of nickel and iron. Yeah, ng station. Okay, so let's continue. So the crust is composed of two basic rock types, the granite and the basalt. So the continental crust is composed mostly of granite, and the ocean and oceanic crust consists of a volcanic lava rock called basalt. 
So, granite for continental crust, basalt for oceanic crust. So, yan. So, basaltic rocks of the ocean plates are much denser and heavier than the granite rock of the continental continental plates. Because of this, the continents ride on the denser oceanic plates. So the crust and the upper layer of the mantle together make up a zone of rigid brittle rock called lithosphere. And the layer below, the rigid lithosphere, is the zone of asphalt-like consistency called the asthenosphere. So the asthenosphere is part of the mantle that flows and moves the plate of the earth. Okay, so I want to, before I proceed to some layers of the earth or other layers of the earth, let's discuss the Mariana Trench. Okay, so gano nga ba kalalim ang Mariana Trench? So, so far, Mariana Trench is the deepest point of the earth. So, pinag-aralan natin sa lesson number 2, which is the volcano. The highest point is Mount Everest, which is 8,848 meters above sea level. Pero, ang Mariana Trench, pag bumaba yan, at ang pinaka, uh, the deepest point in Mariana Trench is what we call the Challenger Deep, which is uh, 11,035 meters below sea level. Okay, so... Let's visit the present. Uh, okay. okay, now we will um, check the Prezi. Tingnan natin. Okay, so this is the Prezi about Mariana Trench. So in, a, in my cell phone, hindi masyado gumagana yung Prezi, pero ma ano naman na, magagamit naman natin. Okay? Okay. So, in terms of location, okay, Mariana Trench is located in the Western Pacific Ocean, east of the Philippines, and about 120 miles east of Mariana Islands. So, in 2009, President Bush declared the area surrounding Mariana Trench as a wildlife refuge called the Mariana Trench Marine National Monument, which covers approximately 95,216 square miles. So that is the location of Mariana Trench. So in terms of creatures, the Mariana Trench is home to many creatures such as the ghost fish, barrel eye fish, or spook fish, dumbo octopus, goblin or vampire shark, giant toxic amoebas, ping pong tree, sponge and many more so those are some uh, pictures the mga creatures na pwede natin makita sa mariana trench okay so the depth of mariana mariana trench is about 10,994 meters or 36,070 feet okay fun fact if you put mount everest in the mount in the mariana trench there will still be a lot of space left at the top. So, ganun kalalim ang Mariana Trench. Okay, so who discovered the Mariana Trench? James Cameron became the first person to reach the Challenger Deep of the Mariana Trench on his own. The third person to do so overall. So, in 1960, oceanographer Don Walsh and Jack Picard visited the Challenger Deep together aboard the Batis Cap Yes. In terms of pressure, at the bottom of the trench, the water column above, above exerts a pressure of 1,086 bars or 15,750 PSI. So, sobrang laki, sobrang ng pressure sa ilalim. Okay, more than 1,000 times, uh, more 1,000 times the standard atmospheric pressure at sea level. So, in terms of different creatures, the strange creatures in the Mariana Trench, yung about the creatures, are different because of the different climate, different temperature, no sunlight, and because they have no different and less predators. Okay, in conclusion, okay, 
As well, all we know, the Mariana Trench is home to many strange creatures. It is a worldwide phenomenon that is being studied even further all the time. More than three oceanographers have gone down to the Challenger to, be, to see what life is like down there. So, yun yung about sa... Okay, so papanoorin natin yung journey to Mariana Trench. Hey, have you ever wanted to take a dive into the deepest parts of the ocean? Well, today, you're going to have this opportunity. Now, how good are you at holding your breath? Not that good? Well, not to worry. Hop aboard my submersible craft and join me in the voyage to the depths. Ready? Boom. Let's dive. Right now, just below the surface, you see that life is thriving here. Fish and marine animals abound, and hey there, swimmers are waving at us. But we won't be staying here for long. Bye-bye. At 65 feet, there's a whole new world opening before your eyes. Shallow coral reefs are standing beautifully not far from the shore. And hey, there are people here again. It's scuba divers this time, though. Water pressure isn't kind to divers without special equipment. 130 feet is the depths where we say goodbye even to recreational scuba divers. It's the maximum allowed for them. Take care, guys. 200 feet, and here's the first orca. These whales inhabit the relatively shallow waters of almost every sea and ocean in the world. Did you know that they're the apex predators, by the way? It means they have no natural enemies, and no one can take them down. At 230 feet, we meet whale sharks, the largest known fish species, weighing up to 60 tons. And they're also quite long livers. Well, yeah, I guess their livers are long at that, but actually, it's about their life expectancy. They can live about 130 years. Now, look outside. If you're a scuba diver, it's a real pro, because at 330 feet, they'll have to be very cautious not to get decompression sickness. It occurs if you rise too quickly to the surface. And if you're lucky, you can also see a giant Pacific octopus. It dwells in cool water starting this deep and going down as far as 6,600 feet. And now we're entering the dark part of the ocean. At 490 feet, just 1% of the light from the surface reaches us. All the rest is absorbed by water. Everything that's deeper will get darker and darker still. Oh, look. At about 660 feet, there's a giant oar fish circling our submersible. These creatures are believed to be the source of all sea serpent sightings and also a lot of alliteration. Sometimes they swim up to the surface and freak out sailors and swimmers. No wonder. These fish can reach 36 feet in length, enough to scare the heck out of me, for example. Okay, now we're at 980 feet. And wait, what's that huge and gangling thing out there? Oh, I get it. It's a Japanese spider crab. Why a spider, you ask? Well, just look at those legs and the answer will come to you without further prompts. By the way, there's almost nothing more to them than legs. The body of such a crab is normally just one and a half feet across. Going deeper now, and at 1,640 feet, you're going to see the last of the blue whales. No, not really the last of them. I mean, that's the deepest they can swim. They don't really need to dive that deep for food, which they have in abundance in shallower waters, but they still can. I guess it's just for the sake of showing how awesome they are. After all, they're the largest creatures in the history of Earth, both in the sea and on land. Shh, you hear this? These are the sounds fin whales are making to talk to their friends many miles away. They can do this thanks to the SOFAR channel, or deep sea channel, that generally starts at 1,970 feet, but can vary in depth. It's a layer of water where the speed of sound is at its minimum, and sound waves can go thousands of miles before disappearing. At the depth of 2,723 feet, we have reached the point where the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, 
would not even show its tip on the surface if it were put underwater. Now we're entering the really interesting part of the ocean, where no sunlight reaches us and strange creatures dwell. One of those is the giant squid, yes, that legendary type. It inhabits the depths of 2,950 feet. Just imagine the creature with eyes the size of frisbees. Sperm whales hunt down these beasts, but they certainly can fight back. What a sight it would be to see such an encounter. And that's where pitch darkness finally falls on us, the midnight zone. The pressure here is so huge that if you somehow end up being here without a submersible, well, you'll simply be crushed in a couple of seconds. And that without seeing a thing too. Mm, not the best of prospects. Anyway, at 3,600 feet, there's West Mata, one of the deepest ocean volcanoes in the world. Its last eruption was in 2009, and it was even filmed by a remotely operated vehicle. 4,200 feet down below, and we see the ferocious great white sharks. These ultimate predators feel great at such a depth. Their eyesight is rather poor, and they navigate by scent, so they really don't need sunlight to hunt down their prey. I don't see you, but I'll still eat you. <laughs> also, the leatherback turtles, the largest turtles in the world, dive at the same depth. I wonder if they do it to tease the great whites. Oh, see those huge nets? That's because we're now at the depth of 4,900 feet, where the catch-all fishing method is used. The nets are here to be dragged along the ocean floor, catching everything unfortunate enough to be caught. I'll let you decide how detrimental this is to the ocean life here. At 6,000 feet, if we were in the Grand Canyon, we'd be sitting at its lowest and deepest point. Imagine that all the crevasses have been thoroughly filled with water, and you'll get the perfect picture. Now, if we're really careful, then at the depth of 6,600 feet, we'll be able to see the black dragonfish, a nightmarish creature that dwells in the deep and dark parts of the ocean. And trust me, it's better off staying right here. It looks like something from a horror movie, and I'd rather it never cross my path. At 7,400 feet, we'll be saying goodbye to sperm whales. This is the deepest point they can dive, and frankly, they have no real business at such a depth. Maybe they hunt the black dragonfish, of course, or it hunts them. Nah, the difference in size is too big. Sperm whales can reach 62 feet in length, which makes them the largest toothed whales in the world. Not many creatures can counter that. It's good that our submersible has a powerful floodlight. Without it, we wouldn't have been able to see the astonishing beauty of the deep sea coral reefs located at the depth of 9,900 feet. They can be found in every ocean, and it's a pity they can't be seen without special deep sea diving equipment. Okay, going deeper still, and at 12,100 feet, we reach the average depth of the world ocean. From now on, the journey into the real depths begins. The general ocean floor has been passed, so now it's time to delve into the abyss. I won't tell you not to be afraid because the scariest creatures of the deep dwell here below the midnight zone. And it doesn't end there. The pressure on the upper limit of the abyss at 13,100 feet is like a whole regiment of elephants stomping on you. Not that you'd have the time to feel it though. Now at 15,000 feet, the monsters out of your worst nightmares pop up. Anglerfish, for example, will scare the heck out of anyone. Its long and crooked teeth, along with a growth on its head that lures the prey, is enough to instill fear even in the bravest. But perhaps even more terrible is the creature called the Black Swallower. It's an eel-like beast that has a very stretchy stomach, and it can swallow prey that's twice its size. Ah, uh, I don't know about you, but I'd rather switch off the lights not to see anything this deep in the ocean. What? You want to see it all? All right, if you insist. Look down below, and you're going to see the deepest shipwreck ever found. SS Rio Grande in the South Atlantic sunk in 1941 and went as low as 18,900 feet. No wonder it was only found 55 years later. And now the deepest and darkest part of the ocean begins. We're diving into the Mariana Trench. Officially, it begins at about 19,700 feet deep. 
It's both the least explored and the most fascinating area for the scientists and adventurers alike. What lies at the bottom of it? Well, we're about to see. But while we're not there yet, I'll show you something else. For example, here's the deepest fish ever found. It's called a snailfish, and it dwells at 26,000 feet. Its body is translucent, so you can actually see right through its skin. Well, I must say I'm glad we didn't turn off the lights after all. This little guy is surprisingly cute for a creature that can withstand such pressure. Going lower and deeper, you won't see any other kind of fish or vertebrate animal whatsoever. The pressure is just too much for such creatures. But there are shrimps and other invertebrates, not to mention microbes, that can dwell even in the deepest part of the ocean. And that part is the Challenger Deep. It's the bottom of the Mariana Trench, and its depth is 35,853 feet. Yes, we've arrived at the very bottom of the Earth. Few people have been here, and very little is known about it yet. But scientists aren't going to stop, and there's hope we'll soon find out what secrets the depths of the ocean hold. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go deep diving just yet. We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. Okay. So, ang ganda ng video, no? Okay, so another video is coming from BBC News. Okay, roger that. We'll uh, go for a release. Life support, good. Depth, one, zero, nine, or two, eight meters. At bottom, repeat. At bottom. Understand you are on the bottom. Uh, congratulations, Victor. Congratulations. Well done. Beginning exploration of the bottom. Well you did it, buddy. Well you done. did it. We all did it. We all did it. Captain Walsh. It was an amazing uh, experience. It was a, an amazing dive. I think uh, almost exactly 12 hours. About three and a half down, four hours on the bottom. I think the longest anyone's ever been on the bottom of the Challenger Deep. And then about four hours up. I went through pretty much all of my electrical power and had to be swapping batteries around and circuits around. It was, a, it, was a, it was a great journey. Saw some really interesting things on the bottom. Galing, no? Yan. So, nasa crust pa lang tayo. Okay, ang, ang susunod na mga layer is mantel. Okay, so magpapatuloy na natin yung lesson. No? Okay, so this is mantle. So the mantle is the layer located directly under the sima. It is the la it is the largest layer of the earth, which is 1,800 miles thick. So the mantle is composed of very hot, dense rock. So this layer of rock even flows like asphalt under a heavy weight. So this flow is due to great temperature differences from the bottom to the top of the mantle. So the movement of the mantle is the reason that the plates of the earth move 
the temperature of the mantle varies from 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit at the top to about 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit near the bottom. Okay, so... Ayan. So again, data sphere is the rigid crust and upper mantle parts. The asthenosphere naman is partially molten or deforms fluidly like plastic under pressure. So after nyan is the lower mantle. Ayan. Which consists, and the mantle itself, which is consists of ultramafic silicates. Okay? So, uh, we're talking about mantle pa rin. So, convection currents. So, the mantle is made of much denser, thicker materials. Because of this, the plates float on it like oil floats on water. So, many geologists believe that the mantle flows because of the convection currents. The convection currents are caused by very hot material and at deepest part of the mantle rising and cooling and then sinking again and then heating, rising, and repeating the cycle over and over again. So, tataas, okay, tapos magkukul, bababa, iinitan, tapos tataas, magkukul, tapos iinitan, bababa. Uh, i iinit, tataas, lalamigan, bababa, tapos iinitan, tataas. Okay, so, the next time you heat anything like soup or pudding in a pan, you can watch the convection currents move in a liquid. So, when a convection currents flow in the mantle, they also move the crust. So, the crust gets a free ride with these currents. A conveyor belt in a factory moves boxes like convection currents in the mantle moves the plates of the earth. So, because of convection currents, okay, movement along plates is possible. Yeah. Now, after mantle, we are now going to the outer core. Okay? So, the outer core or the core of the earth is like a ball of very hot metals. Okay, it, uh, it is uh, 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit to 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So, the outer core is so hot that metals in it are all in the liquid state. So, the outer core is located about 1,800 miles beneath the, the crust and is about 1,400 miles thick. So, the outer core is composed of the melted metals nickel and iron. So, ayun yan. So, 1,400 miles thick, liquid iron and nickel. Okay. And the last part of the Earth's interior is the inner core. So, the inner core of the Earth has temperatures and pressures so great that the metals are squeezed together and are not able to move about like a liquid, but, a force, but are forced to vibrate the place as a solid. So, the inner core begins about 4,000 miles beneath the crust and is about 800 miles thick. So, the temperature may reach 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit and the pressures are 45 million pounds per square inch. This is 3 million times the air pressure on you at sea level. So, let's watch why Earth's core is so hot. to go hundreds of thousands of miles into space. But when it comes to the Earth, we've barely scratched the surface. Our planet's core is a magnificent mystery filled with secrets. Well, it's time to figure them out. The Earth's inner core is an extra hot solid ball with an approximate radius of 760 miles. To put that into perspective, it's just 30% smaller than the moon. But if we've never been there, how did we find this out? Well, we've learned about the core by observing the effects of gravity on objects on the surface of our planet. From there, it's estimated that the Earth's mass is 5.6 sextillion tons. Get out your bathroom scale. Nah, don't. The density of everything that lies on the surface is much lower than the core's average density. Scientists figured out that most of the Earth's mass is located towards the center of our planet. 
It's estimated that more than 80% of the core consists of one of the 10 most common elements in our galaxy, iron. But the iron on the Earth's surface is kind of limited. I know what you're wondering. How did the iron make it all the way down to the core? Well, there is a simple explanation. The heavy element somehow pushed itself, literally, towards the center of the Earth. And a ton, pardon the pun, of research was done to figure out how. Most of the Earth's surface is made of rocks called silicates, and the molten iron had some difficulty passing through them. To help you understand, think of how water struggles to get through a greasy surface. But in 2013, Wendy Mao and her team from Stanford discovered a possible solution for how this happened. They began an experiment to see how iron and silicate react when they're exposed to extreme pressure, like that in the core. They used a diamond anvil cell to pinch the two substances under those conditions, and they achieved it. The pressure was 330 gigapascals, which is around 3.3 million times the atmospheric pressure of our planet. The molten iron slowly squeezed through the silicate rocks, and they had their answer. It took millions of years for the iron to reach the center, so it happened at a snail's pace. Since snails weren't around back then, the iron had to guess how fast to go. Well, now that we have that figured out, how do we know what size the core is? That's when seismology comes into play. During an earthquake, shock waves are spread through the planet. Seismologists study these vibrations and try to read the reflections on the other side. It's like Thor is hitting one side of the planet with his hammer, and the seismologists are listening from the opposite end. But these vibrations also take different routes. They go through various parts of the planet, and that affects the sound they make at the end. Let's take a small detour for a minute. Seismology is quite an old scientific field. In the old days, when vibrations occurred, scientists noticed that something was wrong with them. These vibrations were S waves, and when they were supposed to show up on the other side, they just vanished. At first, they thought that something was wrong with their equipment and it just wasn't picking up the vibrations. But as science progressed, it turned out that these picky S waves could only go through solid material and not liquid. So, something molten was present in the center of the Earth that was preventing the vibrations from going through. So they started digging into their data. They mapped out the paths of the seismic waves and found that around 1,860 miles from the Earth's surface, the rocks transformed into a liquid. But there's also an interesting fact in the game. Inga Lehmann was a Danish seismologist, and in the 1930s, she discovered a new wave pattern. First, we had the S waves that didn't pass through liquid, but then there were also P waves that could travel through the core and appear on the opposite side of the planet. That was when Inga came up with a theory that the core has two layers, the solid inner core, which is around 3,700 miles below the surface, and the molten outer core, which is around 1,860 miles below our feet. When advanced seismographs were invented, her theory was confirmed, but that took 40 years. So now that we have the structure figured out, let's talk about how hot the core is and why. We've already established that we can't put a thermometer down there to study the temperatures. So scientists tried to figure that out by creating the same crushing pressures in their labs. Again, in 2013, a team of French researchers came up with the most accurate number that we've had in years. They put pure iron through high pressure, almost higher than that of the core, to come up with their findings. The temperature of the inner core is about 9,800 degrees while the melting point of pure iron is about 2,800 degrees at the core. Its melting point is around 11,000 degrees. The fluctuation in those temperatures comes from factoring in the extreme pressure the iron is exposed to at the core. Also, other elements inside the core could be bringing the temperature down by approximately 400 degrees. But the reason it remains solid is because of the slow cooling of the outer core and its compression. The inner core spins faster than the Earth. That's caused by the thermal activity inside our planet, which creates the magnetosphere. Oddly, it takes a ton of time, pardon the pun, for heat to leave the Earth. But I'll get to that in a bit. There are three main reasons why the Earth is still boiling. The first one is that the core has remained hot from the time our planet was formed, roughly four and a half billion years ago. 
Remember that number, because towards the end, I'll explain how that happened. That heat hasn't been lost yet. In fact, the Earth is only cooling down around 200 degrees every billion years. Secondly, it generates heat from the friction of the dense materials as they move. And the last reason it's so hot is from the decay of radioactive elements. So why is this important? It makes it easy for scientists to understand how it affects the speed of vibrations that go through the core. Remember the P waves I told you about earlier? Well, these guys travel slower than they should while passing through the core. This shows that there must be some other element in there that we haven't figured out yet. Nickel is one of them, but when scientists ran some tests with nickel, the P waves didn't slow down enough. So they started digging, uh, metaphorically. In 2015, a new study from Durham University came out. It claimed that 90% of the Earth's sulfur is in the core. So maybe that could be the missing element. Around four and a half billion years ago, the Earth collided with a large planetary body that eventually tore apart our planet and formed the moon. That incident left traces behind that led the studies in a new direction. When the impact happened, the Earth's mantle melted and some sulfur-rich liquid squeezed through the ruins and reformed it. Some of it was probably lost in space, but the rest sunk to the core. Scientists from Durham University confirmed that theory by measuring the isotope ratios of elements in the mantle. They compared them to meteorites, which were possibly part of the Earth's original form. The problem was that there were so many different elements in the mantle, it's quite difficult to draw firm conclusions. So they came up with another idea. Copper is usually bound to sulfur. So they analyzed the copper from the Earth's mantle and crust. Now, this was a three-stage study done in different labs using state-of-the-art mass spectroscopes. You still with me here? Good for you. They found that there was a teeny tiny difference in the copper ratios between the Earth's mantle samples and the meteorite samples. That confirmed the theory that the Earth originally collided with another body and most of its mantle just splattered around space. We also know that the core consists of some sulfur. Hopefully soon, we'll be able to find out what the other trace elements are. So to answer your final question, yes, the center of the Earth is hardcore. Yes, you were waiting for that one, weren't you? Hey, if you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click Okay. Yeah, so another video so New Jersey. Well, today I'm setting off on a journey that's way more unusual than that. Down to the Earth's core. And I'm inviting you to join me. Are you ready? Ah, come on, it'll be fun. <laughs> Let's go. The center of the Earth lies about 4,000 miles below its surface, so it's going to be a long trip. The layer I'm smashing through right now is the crust. It's something like the skin of an apple, except you can't bite off a piece when you compare it to the other layers that make up the Earth. Hey, look at that rabbit. Those cuties dig tunnels up to two feet deep, so I'm not actually surprised to meet it here. And gross, was that an earthworm? Some of the deep burrowing types, also known as night crawlers, get big and can live 10 feet below the surface. Moving on. Did you hear that beeping sound? That must be one of those gold diggers. A good metal detector still works at this depth. But you're not likely to find any gold. Maybe a large piece of metal, like a car or something. And this must be the Mole Man burrow. Seriously, there was a guy in London who was digging for 40 years under his house and stopped at 26 feet. What was he looking for? Now, remember how I said the crust wasn't really that thick? It's roughly 21 miles thick and made up of basaltic rocks that are under the sea and granitic rocks that make up the continents. So there's oceanic crust and continental crust. Whoa, was that a crocodile? Nile crocodiles dig the deepest burrows among all animals, so you can find them at 39 feet underground. Hmm, apparently not only crocodiles feel the desire to hide from the rest of the world, 
There are whole underground cities with shelters and catacombs in different countries. The deepest of them lies at 278 feet under Cappadocia in Turkey. Its 18 levels could house 20,000 people. How would they all get there? Today, they could just catch a train at the world's deepest metro station in Kiev, Ukraine, lying at 348 feet. While people have advanced technologies these days to dig this deep, trees just naturally grow this way. In South Africa, there are species whose roots reach up to 400 feet below the surface. I'm currently moving through continental crust, as you see, and two important things you should know about it are that it's about 2 billion years old, even though the oldest rock is 4 billion and it was found on the shore of Hudson Bay, Canada and it covers about 40% of the Earth. Yeah, the rest is oceanic crust. The granitic rocks that it's made of have more silicon, aluminum, and even more oxygen in them than basaltic rocks because they have access to open air on the surface. The crust is the source of all the metals and minerals humans have ever used, except for diamonds, which are much deeper. I think we'll spot them later. Do you have pockets? <laughs> What was that? People in their running gear? As crazy as it sounds, in 2004, a half marathon was organized in the Bocce salt mine in Poland. It was the deepest half marathon ever. You don't often see people running at a depth of 695 feet after all. Boy, nothing can surprise me now that I've seen this, except for maybe bats. What are you guys doing here? 1,000 brown bats spend every winter in a New York zinc mine. <laughs> How cozy. Ooh, it's getting cold. This is the deepest point you can find permafrost, or permanently frozen soil layers at. Speaking of frost, the Earth's crust serves as an electric blanket that covers the mantle. It's rich in the radioactive elements uranium, thorium, and potassium, which produce heat. Moving on, this here looks like a good hiding spot. The deepest cave in the world is Verovkina Cave in Georgia, the country, not the state, at about 1.4 miles below the ground. And that was a train I heard. Wait, how could a train possibly run this deep? It couldn't until 2016, when the deepest and longest underground railway, Gothard Base Tunnel, was opened in Switzerland. Just when you think it couldn't possibly meet any other living beings down here, here comes the worm from the Tautona mine in South Africa, the deepest multicellular organism. Speaking of mines, the deepest among them is the Maponic Gold Mine at two and a half miles, also in South Africa. While I'm moving through continental crust, the oceanic crust is never too far, and its average depth is 4.3 miles. It covers around 60% of the surface of our planet and is thinner, around 12 miles, denser and younger, it's no older than 180 million years, than the continental crust. It's constantly being born at mid-ocean ridges, and that's what makes the continents move. At seven miles deep, you have your final chance to see the ocean on this trip. We've just reached the Mariana Trench, the deepest point of the Pacific Ocean. Traveling through the crust was fun, but it had to end at some point. And here comes the border where they don't stamp your passport. The boundary between the crust and the mantle. It's the largest section of the Earth, at 1,801 miles wide. It's made up of magma rock and is heavy, making up 65% of the Earth's mass. It stores many archaeological secrets and is made up of four elements, oxygen, silicon, manganese, and iron. Even though it's basically a solid rock, the mantle is slowly and constantly moving. What was that bling? It must be the remnants of diamonds that were formed here at 93 miles deep a billion years ago. Then, as molten rock, they moved up to the surface. The pressure is getting more and more extreme, and it's getting colder and colder down here. 
This is the deepest point where earthquakes are born. The ones that come from here are rare and get pretty weak by the time they've traveled 435 miles up to the surface. Another 30 miles down on this journey, and here comes the lower mantle. You can thank it for any tectonic plate movements. Whew, why is it getting so hot? Wow, that was some serious change of landscape. At 1,814 miles deep, the mantle ends and the outer core begins. It's a sunless sea of super hot liquid metal that's about the size of Mars. This sea has slow moving currents and magnetic and electrical fields that produce storms and cyclones. By the way, the Earth owes its magnetic feel to the outer core. Without it, life on our planet would simply be impossible. Once every several thousand years, something happens in this layer. The magnetic poles reverse and north and south change places. It's not likely to happen again soon, though. At 2,750 miles, the inner core welcomes you. It's the hottest innermost part of the planet. It's a super dense solid ball made of 80% iron and 20% nickel that heats up to 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty much the same as the surface of the sun. The inner core is nearly the size of the moon and makes up 2% of the Earth's mass. If you took all the water in all the oceans and multiplied it by five, this would be roughly the same as the volume of the inner core. It remains solid thanks to super high pressure, which is a million times greater than the pressure on the surface of the planet. Because no one has been this deep, except for us right now, duh, scientists have a lot of research to do in this area. Some of them believe small crystals of iron are born in the outer parts of the core that merge into giant crystals the size of a city closer to the center. That's why the inner core is also called the crystal core. Not so long ago, British scientists found out that the inner core is relatively young, probably somewhere between 500 and 1,000 million years old, and that's nothing in terms of Earth science. It's hard to tell exactly where the center of the Earth is, but it looks like I can put my flag down here at 3,958 miles. Now, that was quite a journey. Now, for those of you who are thinking of packing your bags to go see the Earth's core, I have some not so good news. It's technically not possible yet because there's no way to survive the pressure and extreme heat that are waiting down there. However, if someone built a tunnel that would provide all the necessary protection, uh -huh. it would only take 18 minutes of free falling to get there. Hey, sign me up. Yon. So Okay, sorry. Okay, so what a journey. Okay, so may isang movie na ano, katulad ng napanood yung video kanina lang, ay may movie dito na na untitled is The Core. So The Core is 2003 American science fiction disaster film directed by John Amiel and yung mga artista ay sila Aaron Eckhart, Hilary Swank. Okay, so the film focuses on a team whose mission is to drill to the center of the earth and set off a series of nuclear explosion in order to restart the rotation of earth's core. So the film was released on March 28, 2003, 2003 by Paramount Pictures. Maganda siyang movie. So kasi biglang namamatay bigla yung mga tao. And then, uh, parang nag-shutdown yung magnetic field ng Earth. So, uh, assignment niya yan. Dapat mapanood niya yung The Core. Okay. So, yung... Okay. So... Yan. Yan ako lang yung The Core. Okay. Okay. Kita nyo ba yung pictures? Picture na yan. So, ang tawag dyan ay The Pale Blue Dot. Okay? So, this photograph of Earth taken February 14, 1990 by NASA's Voyager 1 at a distance of 3 
1.7 billion miles or 6 billion kilometers from the sun. So, di ba? Grabe. Ano yan, sobrang layo na ng Voyager 1 sa Earth. Tapos kinunan yung picture na yan. So, the image inspired the title of scientist Carl Sagan's book, The Pale Blue Dot. So, gum- may libro si Carl Sagan. Title, Play- Pale Blue Dot, A Vision of the Human Future in Space, in which he wrote sa kanyang book, Look Again. Tignan yan. At that dot. That's here. That's hope. That's us. So, sobra sa vast, sa laki ng kalawakan, ang earth ay isa lamang at dyan ang ating terahan. Ayan ang ating tahanan. So, ano ang dapat natin gawin? Gaw, gawin natin na pangalagaan ng ating mundo. Yan. So, maraming salamat sa pakikinig. At uh, doon natin, uh, doon natapos, natatapos ang ating ano, Layers of the Earth topic, lesson number 4. So, thank you for listening and sana pangalagaan natin ang ating mundo, steward of our, uh, of God's creation, kumbaga. Okay, don't forget to subscribe sa YouTube channel. Thank you. God bless.